For shooting out of here, you know, let's say nine onward, sometime like that. Okay. Meet here at nine. Meet here at nine. Yeah, we can meet good. here at nine and go over the plan. You know. Yeah. When I tell you it's a game to open up the door, you don't open the door, and then you hold on okay. to so the door here, here and hold on and get the buoys out. Okay. So you got a buoy next to you there, Jeremy? Yeah. All right, I'll get in the co pilot seat. <clears throat> So I'm just going to be holding the door. Okay. It looks like you've got... Yeah, I think this will work well. Is it a stupid question? But if you're landing on the ice after you've dropped the buoy, why are you actually dropping it and not just putting this it down? This is exactly what I wanted to do. <laughs> this, this is part of the test. <laughs> it's part of the test. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're, we're checking whether we can... Whether you can drop them. And yeah, whether they okay. survive. And then we want to get... So it wasn't a stupid question. But yeah, okay. yeah. We call them ice trackers. The ice tracker project was to basically test or verify that these very inexpensive ice drifters would be able to accurately track ice motion. Ready to go, Jeremy? We put them in the mask of the GI's sea ice radar, and we're hoping to tag features that show up in the radar and then track them after they go outside of the radar mask. And so then you learn about the fate of the ice. If you deploy them in clusters, you can do what oceanographers do with drifters, which is basically to look at how the ice breaks apart or how it converges convergence and divergence. I'm an oceanographer, so I look at the currents under the ice. And one of the things that, that I saw when I was doing my PhD that was intriguing was that we saw these small scale perturbations in the flow field in the ocean. And that was probably related to the ice. And we saw some evidence of that with some very fine scale radar data analysis from a satellite. But we couldn't really get a handle on that because the radar data is so expensive to acquire that it was really limiting. And it's also very intensive to process. So we wanted a simple solution to, to those issues. So there's a lot of planning that goes into a field campaign like this. To some extent, we got quite lucky this year. The old multi-year ice that is something we try and look for was, was very close to the coast. And we used satellite data to guide uh, areas that we wanted to hone in on with the helicopter. And that allows me to give the pilot some, some waypoints in the GPS. And then from the air, of course, we get a great view of the sea ice and the layout of it. And we can identify different regions of ice that allows us to pick a suitable ice flow in which to deploy our buoys.
This year we deployed 10 buoys in two clusters of five. And by placing clusters of buoys very close to each other, uh, separated roughly by 10 kilometers, and in the vast Arctic Ocean, that, that really is very close to each other. It allows us to look at small scale differences in motion as different parts of the ice accelerate relative to other parts. We put two sets of buoys out in more or less perfect pentagons. And because the ice wasn't moving when we put them out, they, they remained in those pentagon shapes for a couple of days. But then just this morning, those pentagons are starting to deform. They're starting to change shape. And that's one of the measurements that we'll be making over the next coming months as these buoys continue to drift, is how has that pentagon changed shape? Has it contracted? Has it expanded? Has it stretched? Has it rotated? These are things that tell us about how the ice is responding to the wind and the ocean currents, and they tell us about the forces that are involved in breaking ice and creating open water. We put out two different clusters of five. One was kind of in mixed multi-year first-year ice, and then one was in mainly first-year ice. We targeted the multi-year ice because that's really a concern to Conoco and Shell because it tends to be ridged, and if it comes into their working area, then obviously they don't want to be anywhere near it, or they want to have some warning about where it's going to end up. But the first-year ice, that mix of first-year and multi-year ice is probably what we're going to be seeing in the area. At least that's what we've been seeing in the past few years in the Beaufort Sea and the Chukchi Sea around Barrow. And we expect them to move differently, so we wanted to kind of tag a couple of different types of ice and then get a feel for how they would move around. Thank you.